Hey, Miles here at Tactical Hive, and we are going to continue talking about how to shoot faster with a pistol. This is now the fourth installment. It's been a few weeks um, because I was down with a, a co bad cold and cough. I had a lot of travel for Tactical Hive and doing some classes and things like that. But now I'm back, and so we're going to continue. If you recall, we've been focusing on shooting faster, but not necessarily talking about squeezing or moving our trigger finger faster. It's all about vision. We started off with discussing how being target focused could help you shoot faster. Then we moved on to different ways to approach different targets, specifically what you should be seeing with your sights or your red dot, and that's going to dictate how you should take your shot, meaning what kind of aiming scheme you use. In the first part, we talked about how being hard target focused can help you shoot faster. Then we moved on to talk about what you should see with your sights based on your skill level, the size of the target, the difficulty of the target, distance of the target, and that is all about aiming schemes or sight confirmation. We talked about how you should approach something that is very easy for your skill level. Maybe it's a really big close target. Then we moved on to talking about predictable sights, meaning your sights may be wobbling all over the place, your front sight or your red dot, but you know that you can predict that it's going to be within the target zone. Today we are going to talk about the last aiming scheme and this is when you want to make sure that your sights or your red dot are steady because we are now engaging a very difficult target. So if you want to learn how to engage really difficult targets, make sure to stay tuned. All right, so I have a target downrange about six yards with different shapes, and those shapes represent the difficulty of the target. If you recall in previous weeks, we talked about how to engage a target that's really simple. You can use a reference on your gun. I mean, this is something that's very close and you don't necessarily have to see your red dot or any kind of steady sights on target. And that big square in the middle represents that very, very easy target. Of course, for your skill level, I, I don't know if that's truly an easy target, but just for the sake of the video, that represents something that is very, very easy. So we talked about with that distance, we don't really need steady sights. That three inch or so circle at the very bottom represents kind of that middle target difficulty where it is a target I must use my sights on, but I don't need my sights to be steady on that target. So this is, if we're using a red dot, maybe that red dot is moving like crazy. And as long as it's moving within that circle, I can break the shot. I'm confident, I can predict that the dot is just gonna move within the target zone. But in today's video, we're talking about a really difficult target and that one inch paster at about six yards is what we are referring to now. In this situation, I have to be perfect with my red dot or my front sight. It has to be steady and right where I want it to be to land the shot. So I need to take the time and ensure I have a good trigger press. I have to be patient enough to wait for the dot to settle, then I can break the shot. So as usual, we're gonna start things off with dry fire. And I have my trusty dry fire mag. If you are using a striker fired pistol, I do recommend this because it's going to allow you to do your dry fire. It's gonna automatically reset your trigger. And if you do want a laser emitted with every trigger squeeze, dry fire mag has released the smart dry fire mag, which will do exactly that. All right, so what we're going to do is we are zoned in on that really difficult target. Again, this is relative. Um, this might be easy for you. This might be really, really difficult. The point here is during our dry fire now, we can no longer aim at the big circle or the big, bigger square and just really have more freedom for that with that dot to move, not where that front sight. Now we need to make sure our dot or our sight are right on top of that paster, that really difficult target, have a good prep trigger, then have the patience to wait for a steady sight, and then we break the shot. And this can be difficult for a lot of people, especially if you are doing that difficult shot after easy shots. So you be you might be shooting really rapidly, getting a lot of shots on that easy target, then all of a sudden you have to transition to that difficult target, you have to slow down, get a precise, stable dot on that target, then you break the shot. So this is something you really need to be patient with as you're doing your dry fire. For now, we're gonna start off with just reps from here. If you wanna do this from the holster, you can. You're just going to present. I begin to prep my trigger. I'm at that very difficult target, that one inch paster. I wait for a steady red dot or front sight, then break the shot. Okay, then I'm back. We're just getting used to that. I'm gonna do it again. I'm going to punch out. And then I break the shot once it's steady. Now you might be wondering, okay, why, what does this have anything to do with shooting faster, right? 
We're not even talking about moving our trigger finger quickly. We've been, we've been talking about three different aiming schemes and being target focused. The idea here is that by knowing your abilities and knowing what you're going to shoot at, you can adjust the aiming scheme right away, all right? So you know if you can be faster with a target or slower with a target. For example, that one inch pacer at the very top, I know I'm gonna have to slow it down, be strict on myself, then break the shot when I'm ready. But that middle square, I can really blast it and ensure or be very confident that all my hits are gonna be at the center. The bottom three inch circle would be kind of in the middle. Here, I'm going to accept a little wobble, then break the shot. So for the drop bar session, we are starting off with single shots at that one inch paster. As you feel comfortable, then you are going to add to this. You can switch it up. I would start off with big to small. So I might start off with two shots at the square, two shots, which are really quick. Then I move my sights down to the circle and I take another two shots and they might be a little slower than the square. And then immediately I'm gonna move up to the top target then take two shots. But those two shots at the paster at the top are very deliberate. I'm making sure my dot is not moving, it's steady on the targets. As I mentioned, we are doing this when the target is very difficult for our abilities. So it's pretty simple at its core. We need to understand our skill level and understand the difficulty of the target. And as we see these target arrays or anything that we are about to shoot, we know what kind of aiming scheme or what kind of sight confirmation we need when we break the shot, or I should say before we break the shot. So we can be fast when we can get away with it and get really disciplined and deliberate when we know the target is going to be very difficult. So what I'm going to do now is move on to the live fire, which is very similar to dry fire, but this is going to be the true test to see if we are very accurate with our shots. Okay, we're moving on to live fire. I'm going to load my gun right now and I have the same target about six yards away. I have a one inch paster and we are starting off with that one inch paster. So very deliberate shots. I can no longer go quickly and accept any kind of wobble in my sights, they need to be steady. So I'm here, and for red dot shooters, you need to know your holdover because if you are very close to your target, your red dot is much higher than your actual barrel, so you have to hold over for that. So if we are very close, I'm actually gonna put my red dot higher than the intended target. So if I'm aiming for that square, I'm going to actually put my dot about one full square over the black square here, right? And that should get me on the dot there. So I'm here, I'm gonna be very deliberate with my trigger press here. Okay, so I'm a little to the right, but the, I was even there. Okay, I felt jerk on my trigger there. But here's the idea again. This is a tar hard target, so we have to be very deliberate. So I do it again here. Okay, so that was on target. Finger off the trigger, I'm relaxed. I'm gonna do it again. I'm prepping my trigger, I'm taking my time. Okay, so that's in the black again. So I'm really relaxed. You don't have to keep your arms out there because if you get fatigued, remember what I talked about, we need to have the visual patience to ensure that our dot is there. But if we're fatigued, then there's gonna be a lot of movement. So for now, as we're just practicing, I'm gonna present out here. I have a prep trigger. I'm waiting for the dot to settle. Then I take my shot, finger off the trigger, and I'm back. Okay, so after you have landed very good shots, you're consistent, maybe you know, maybe there's 10 directly where you want to hit that, that hard target, you can do a few things. You know, you could move the, you could do this again, go further back and uh, just get more reps in. But what I want you to do after a certain uh, number of reps is to begin to play with what we call throttle control. So now you need to understand that going back to what we're talking about in the theme of shooting faster, based on the target, the difficulty target and your skill level, you can change how you are aiming and how fast you're pulling the trigger based on your vision. So looking at that middle square here, as I present, I might take three quick shots as soon as I see any kind of red or a reference of my slide, back plate, red dot, whatever it is on that big, uh, big black square in the middle, okay? Uh, now again, that represents, is supposed to represent a very, very, very easy target for you, okay? So I'm here and when I present, I'm gonna talk this through, I might take three shots and it's all good, okay? I have a prep trigger if I need to take more shots here and I'm not looking for any keyholes or super small groups, I have that entire target zone. 
Okay, then from there, after I take three shots, now I might move down to the three inch circle. Now that three inch circle is a little bit more difficult. So now my cadence might be a little different. So I took three shots, but they're all in and notice how I had to slow down a little bit because I didn't have as much room for that red dot to wobble, right? And I still want accurate shots. After that, now I'll move to the top and take three shots. So those are much slower, but you'll see one of them got uh, one of them moved to the right, but you'll see again the kind of the same thing there, all aligned, pretty much good accurate shots. So what you want to do now, I'm not going to go through. Well, let's see if I have all enough for all three. I don't have enough for all three, so I will do. Uh, let's see here. I think I only have four rounds, so I'm just going to do one, one, one. All right. So immediately, what I would do, but I want you to do at least two shots for each of those shapes here. So without a buzzer, I might present one shot. One shot to the, to the three inch square, then one shot to the painter. Figure out the trigger, then I'm done. The idea here is we are now working what we did in the previous weeks and you have permission to go faster when the target is easier. You don't need the same sight confirmation, right? You don't necessarily need what we're doing today on that top one inch paster. So let's see here, I've got, I should probably have one more round here, okay? So again, after you do that a number of times, you can increase the distance to make it more difficult, but we're aiming at different shapes there and changing the speed of our shooting. You can also reverse the order or pick a, you know, make it random. So you might start off with uh, the two inch circle, then go to the one inch pacer, then the big square. And they don't necessarily have to be these exact shapes. You can change it up. The idea is you're changing the difficulty of the target. So one more time though for uh, another rep here, my last round, just to emphasize what we're doing for today. If we know the target is extremely difficult, I have to wait for my sights to be steady. I'm prepping my trigger, then I take the shot when I'm ready, okay? So there you guys have it, simple enough. We're using different aiming schemes, different levels of sight confirmation in order to shoot faster. As I mentioned earlier, this is different what people probably think of when they think about shooting faster. They're thinking about how quickly you're pulling the trigger, which is something we'll discuss in another video. But right now we're thinking about vision and what our vision is telling us in terms of when we can break that shot. And if we know that we are shooting something very simple and we can track our dot anywhere in here, a bigger, easier target, we can take the shot faster. In contrast to something really difficult, we need a steady sight, red dot, front sight, then we break the shot when we know and can confirm that we are on target. Tune in next week if you wanna learn what we can actually do with our trigger finger physically to move it faster. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you have not subscribed yet, we release a video every single day. So if you want to be informed as to what is released, make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.